Hey guys, so today we'll be looking at a 350 MAG MPI with an aftermarket heat exchanger kit. We'll be taking a look at a mysterious coolant leak of which the customer says he's getting about every two hours all the coolant is gone and he overheats. And then he also sees no coolant in the bilge. So stick around and take a look at what we find. Well, let's do a quick check on the dipstick. I don't smell coolant. Well, it doesn't mean it isn't in there. It just means I don't smell it external though. We'll, we'll take a look. So this engine was a raw water engine yeah, and now it's, it was. yeah, it's now it's fresh water. Did you make it fresh water or you did? Yes. Okay. Did that start the overheating problems? So we bought the, yes, we bought the um, boat up in Northern California. It was on the Delta. So it was in, it was in fresh water. Okay. And before we brought it down, I had the, the fresh water cooling system installed. When we got it down here, it, like I said, that one leaked. Um, this one? Yeah. And it's just, neither one of them have ever been like, a hundred percent like the other one it, it's fine at idle but if i run it at speed it'll get up to like 165. this will yeah instead of like 158. It's, i did have some guy take a look some guy was here at the dock a mechanic he said he was going to come back and look at it he never did but he said that the, the salt water pump here where you're looking yeah he said it was leaking uh, well there's an easy way to take a look at that I'm just... oh yeah it's leaking real bad would that cause the coolant to leak though? No. I wish I had known there was going to be a coolant leak because I would have brought some other equipment. I was only told there's a salt water leak and it's overheating. So I go, oh, it's a salt, it's a, it's most likely a stern drive boat, but it's not, it's an inboard. Man, there's like a nasty oily mess in the bilge too. Mm. These engines are both leaking some oil. I'm wondering if this has a popped exchanger. So you said you put this kit on. How old is this kit? A year. A year. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take the end caps off and see if there's any orange in the end caps. If there's any orange there, then the leak is inside the heat exchanger. You might have a cracked manifold on that side or it might be some like coolant that has dripped down. Cause I'm looking at it and I see a little bit, but it's not enough for me to go crazy over it. And if I can't see it in the heat exchanger, what I might decide to do, cause I wish I had known that there was a coolant leak too. Uh, a tester for this so I'll fill it with coolant and see if coolant comes out the sides because uh, how much do you fill this how many times I mean, uh, a couple times now it's been at least well the last time it took nearly a half a gallon and you're saying now it's empty again that was I don't know three trips ago okay let's see how much it consumed it just smells rotten too That's, uh, it's taken almost the entire gallon. Going somewhere. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm afraid of. Because usually, if we have a coolant leak this big, that's always a question of just where did a whole stinking gallon go unless it went out the tailpipe. Let's see, yeah, almost three quarters of a gallon. That's enough to get you to overheat. This is 16. Hey guys, we work really hard to try to bring you these videos. So if they help you at all, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll try to help as much as we can. Thank you so much. Very little to no water. Fourteen.
still going down. Did you overheat it really bad before you found out that it was leaking or no? No, I've never overheated it really bad. Is it holding? No, but I'm not seeing really any leak, which is what's concerning. It's wet. It's wet again. Okay, so yeah, it's down to like 11. What we're gonna do, here's what I think we should start with. And you can agree with me or disagree with me and let me know what you think. Um, I think we need to start with two things. I think we need to start with manifolds on this engine because this manifold is leaking down in the corner right where my phone is kind of shining on the cylinder closest to me. So it would be cylinder number two right here. I'm going to check compression on that cylinder too. The reason for that being, if it's leaking internally, it could be pushing water into the engine, but we're not seeing it on the oil because it's in the manifold. It's not in the block. So it might just be burning everything off right as it enters the, the engine, which would make sense. You're not having a large leak. I think it might be. Yeah. I, I see a, a little bit of a fog coming out of that exhaust when we first started up. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I'll pull a spark plug and see if it looks wet. If it looks wet, um, I'll run a compression. If compression's low, we kind of have to go from there. Um, luckily, it's coolant and not salt water because if it was salt water inside, this engine would be toast. Right. So, so good on you for the cooling system because it did save your, it, it may have saved your engine in this case. The other thing I think we should do is a service as well as um, cleaning the bilge out. Yeah. So we can tell if there's any leaks I Be like that, yeah. because I, th I think with that oil in the bilge, we're not sure if you have an oil leak or you just have somebody spilled a little bit of oil when they were filling, which both are entirely possible. Well, that, that generator might leak oil too. You think? It might. It might? Okay. I am looking for the little end piece. Yeah. And I'll say this, if we have one manifold that's cracked, I'm kind of going to recommend that we're going to do all the manifolds oh, on risers because I'm wondering if they took it in the brackish water, even though they were in, del in well, the I'm delta. Sure. I'm sure. Because... I'm sure it was in the brackish water. The cast iron, once it hits brackish or salt water, it immediately starts it a timer. Yes. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. All you can do is replace... But once we do this, you shouldn't have that happen again because no more salt water, no more salt water in the manifolds. Yeah. There can be a freak accident, but besides that, it never really has a problem again. Meaning that sometimes uh, what we get going on is uh, like a severe, severe overheat. I've seen that crack manifolds, sure. but that's not, you know, that's, that's owner induced usually. Yeah. Like I said, these have gotten hot to the point of, see what you said, like 180 and then. That's not bad. Oh, you know why? Because these were saltwater motors, so they're pro uh, uh, raw water. So they had salt running through them, so they're programmed for a different temperature. Yeah. Because the freshwater ones don't go off until 210. Oh no, that's never even gotten that high. Yeah. That's so funny you say that because I had a guy on the boat who's experienced captain. And he was like, I don't know why these alarms are going off. It's not even that hot. No. So it's because you have water. raw water engines, yeah. raw water computers on a salt water or on a on a freshwater application engine. Yeah. A funny thing is you actually can get a little bit better fuel economy with the 
uh, freshwater computers. They're a little bit better. They run a little hotter, and because they run a little hotter, they don't need as much fuel. Mm. But, I mean, it's not noticeable. It's like 3%, 4%. Okay, tighten down, tighten down. Cap. I think that's what's going on. So yeah, we'll have to take all this off and clean a bunch of it. We'll need some hose clamps and such too. Not a bunch, but I'm thinking this saltwater pump's been flinging water and it's hitting the bottom of the heat exchanger right here. And it's causing these hose clamps to start to corrode on the front. Yeah. So we'll probably replace a clamp or two. I don't think a lot of them need it, just one or two.